it's just this is the sport. We're here to hurt each other. And I mean, is there a, is there a big difference in preparation when you consider Neil Siri and pa Patrick Hill? And like, I mean, is there a different type of preparation involved for them two kind of different styles? Um, yes and no. Um, sparring partners have to change, certain drills have to change, mitt work changes stylistically. Um, a lot of things will change, but in a lot of ways the routine is the same, as in like, I'll go to strength and conditioning, I'll, go, I'll, I'll put in the same amount of work, but in different ways. Thanks so much. Cheers. How relevant is your uh, experience of 189 with that very pro Irish crowd there? How relevant is that for you going into this fight? I think it's been it's very good experience, you know. I, I've handled a very, um, a very pro Irish crowd. I've handled, um, I, and I feel like I handled it well, you know. I honestly thought they were going to be so much louder. Like I thought they were going to like scream at me, or, like throw throw cans at the state, like you know, like I thought they were going to go nuts. But like you know, it was just like it, it, it was. It, they want their boy, their hometown boy to win, and I understand that. And you know, it's just part of the sport. They're gonna they're gonna root against me, and I'm fine with it. Had it to be the bad guy. I want to say the bad guy. <laughs> in the eyes of the Irish fans, in the eyes I of the Irish I would think they would love me after. I came into their hometown and performed for them and tried to entertain them, man. You should love me. How does that make you feel, though, mentally, kind of going into a fight knowing that, you know, the most of the majority of the crowd are going to be against you? Um, it's something like I just make my peace with. I try to not let it get to me. I might play to it a little bit, but at the end of the day, you can't let the crowd influence you too much. Like it just, it, it, part of the sport is they're either gonna boo you or cheer for you, but you shouldn't let it get to your head too much. Um, it's just not smart. Um, and I don't know if obviously you've probably been asked this already and a million times, but what was that first reaction when you, well, first when you heard about the co-main and then obviously going into being the co uh, the main event now for this event? It was like the same reaction twice. I was ecstatic for like 20 minutes and then after like I kind of like got my bearings back, like took a deep breath, you know, looked at the situation. I was like, okay, well, same fight. So let's go out there and let's get this done. So you don't feel any different? Um... Not, no, not really. I mean, I'm happy. I guess I'm happier. Did you pick up a suit, a uh, pre-main event or a post-main event? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is pre-main event. I was always going to come out here and dress like this. You know, I got to look slick, man. This has been a tradition from um, when I fought in Australia. Um, my manager took me out and I got my first suit and then and I ended up winning. So I was like, all right, okay, well, I can't, you know, we're pretty superstitious. You know, fighters are pretty superstitious. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to get a suit now every fight. Nice. Is that, did you pick it up here in Ireland? Or? Yeah, I got it. I got it here in Ireland. It's like an Italian suit or something. I was pretty, I was pretty happy with it. It looks, it looks pretty tailored. It looks like the real deal. Um, yeah, I, I, feel, I feel pretty sexy, man. I feel like I look good. <laughs> So how are you finding Dublin then so far? I saw a little video of you and uh, one of your teammates uh, in the park, I think. Um, yeah, we're enjoying it, you know. Um, we just thought it was funny, like our girlfriends are kind of teasing us and stuff like, oh, you guys get to be out there in, I um, in Ireland enjoying Europe. And it's like, it's like, yeah, this is kind of funny if you think about it. Might be a little bit too close, friend. We're, we're close friends, might be a little too close. So how are you finding it here? What do you think of um, Europe? Um, I'm having a blast out here. It's amazing. Um, there's like a lot of stuff here. Like I'm pretty sure you guys take for granted that like I haven't really seen before. Like like just the roads, like like the cobblestone roads and stuff. Like I've never seen that before. And like I was amazed by it. I was like walking on it, trying to like play with it. Um, it, it it's pretty cool out here. There's a lot of stuff, old buildings. Like I haven't really seen buildings like this before. It's it's pretty awesome. So when did you arrive here in Dublin? Um, I've been here since Thursday afternoon. And you adjusting okay then you seem obviously very relaxed very happy um yeah i'm adjusting pretty well um i'm kind of messing with my sleep schedule because of the the main event co-main and stuff um like working on my peak hours and whatnot but yeah i'm i'm adjusting well i've been here for a while um hawaii is like the other side of the world like legitimately the other side of the world there's like a i think you guys are 11 hours ahead of us so yeah um, it, I came out here early knowing that I would have to work on my sleep schedule. So the two main bouts were scratched for these cards. Why do you think that people should still watch the UFC in Dublin? Oh, well, um, from what I understand, Patty was the people's, the people's main event coming into this fight. Nothing's changed now. The people's main event is the real main event. So you guys should still come out and support your boy, you know what I mean? What did you think of Patty as a, an opponent for you when you first heard? He's interesting. Um, I always thought like he, he, he was a good challenge just because he's like the only guy in the division I know of that's taller than me. So it's like 
to, to really be a champion, you have to be able to beat all styles, and this is like the one opportunity I'm going to get to beat someone like taller than me. So how have you been preparing then for him and his style of fight? Um, I've been sparring with taller fighters. I've been sparring with like uh, Max Holloway, um, a couple other guys from our gym, um, real lanky strikers. Um, yeah, we've been putting in the work. Has Max Holloway given you any uh, wise words of advice? <laughs> He's been taunting me during practice. I'm not sure if it's something that um, happened to him when he fought. But um, he's been taunting me and like trying to get into my head like mid sparring and it's pretty funny. <laughs> Is he trying to prepare you maybe for? Uh, I think he thinks that um, Patty's gonna try and like talk to me when we're fighting. He's gonna try and get in my head like mid fight. So you know we've been preparing for that. So how have you been taking it? Um, it took a while to adjust at first because when, when someone's taunting you and like telling you like what come hit me It's like okay. I'm gonna come hit you so like I, I, at first it was getting to me But I, I think I've got it figured out now so, You're like a Nick Diaz impersonation yeah, there? Like, like when, yeah, like the Nick Diaz thing. Yeah, like, what, what, come hit me, like that <laughs> So how do you see the fight unfolding then on Saturday? Um, I'm gonna try and pressure him and break him. Hopefully, get a finish. Either knock him out or submit him. Um, could come, could come a bunch of different ways. I, I always look for the finish in all of my fights. I'm always trying to get a finish. So, I, I'm not exactly sure what's gonna happen, but I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be interesting. What round are you predicting that finish? First. Sure. You said something interesting. You said that you're behind schedule. I mean. Did you really? Did you came into the UFC thinking I'll be a champion in in a year? Yeah, that 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 was probably a little bit of like the naiveness of me, the like naiveness of youth. I thought I was like the man coming in. I was undefeated. I, I thought I was I thought I was like God's gift to MMA or whatever. Thought I was the next John Jones, but I was wrong, man. But still, it's good to have high goals. You know, it's good to set your sights high. Um, it's, you know, I might not get exactly what I want, but, you know, if, if I can get close, you know, it'll be good. What, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just say, I mean, obviously the champion of your division is, is a pretty solid fighter. I mean, nobody's been able to figure him out yet, at least at flyweight. What do you, uh, what do you see when you look at the champ? Um, I see speed. I, I see a lot of um, switching um, stances. I see speed. I see... What he does is he enters well and then exits. Like he doesn't just plan his attack, he plans his exit also. So that's kind of interesting and would probably need to be addressed. But yeah. How far away do you think you are realistically from being in a position to challenge him? Two to three years minimum. Is that been tough to realize that? Like you came in saying, yeah, I'm gonna. That, that hurts me. That, that hurts me. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> But I guess I mean in a situation like this, you got to feel like, man, this could really advance things along. Um, yeah, it really could, but um, it it really could advance me. But I still need to take out ranked guys. I still need to fight ranked guys. You know, um, I've fought one ranked person, and that's not really warranting a title shot yet.